Amid the deepening crisis and total border shutdown in Haiti, two members of Congress managed to evacuate a group of 10 Americans on a small helicopter in the middle of the night. Among them, best-selling author Mitch Albom, who has run an orphanage in Port-au-Prince for 14 years. He has called his experience harrowing, but told NBC News, what we went through is nothing compared to what the Haitians go through. Mitch Album, author and founder of Have Faith Haiti, joins me now. It's been a while, Mitch. It is good to see you home and safe. Uh, walk us through that escape, the dash to the helicopter. What was going through your mind? Well, it was very important that we do it in the middle of the night because the helicopters had been shot at in the daytime hours, and we didn't want anybody filming it and drawing attention to the area where our orphanage is located or anything like that. So it was very important to do it in the middle of the night. It's hard to get a helicopter that can fly at night, from what I understand. Uh, we had, uh, I go there every month, so it's, it's not, you know, unusual for me to be there. But we had also brought with us, uh, along with my wife and I, eight guests, volunteers to work there. And they, some of them had never been to Haiti before. So I thought it was critical in my responsibility to make sure that they got out safely. And so uh, we had this thing arranged with Corey Mills uh, and, and Lisa Mc McLean from, uh, from Congress, although it wasn't a congressional effort, it was a private effort. And we were to meet it at three o'clock in the morning. And then um, uh, we got a message uh, at about two o'clock that they were 10 minutes away. So we had to sort of scramble very quickly. And then another message said, no bags, just passports. And so we had to leave all of our stuff and uh, the helicopter came down in this secure location we had decided upon. And in 67 seconds, we got 10 people under the blades that were you know, going around and, and thrown into the place. And it was a much smaller helicopter that they had originally intended. So there weren't seats for anybody. It was everybody was just on top of one another in a big sort of human ball. And the door closed. And we were very quickly up off the ground and, and just sort of, I think, holding our breath that they didn't hear any gunshots or anything. And then when about 20 some minutes later, they said that we had cleared out of Haitian airspace, our guests were all clapping, but my wife and I kind of uh, both uh, later admitted that we had sort of a, you know, a gut punch because that meant when we were leaving our kids behind officially. And um, I'm, I'm happy to be home, but I'm very heartbroken to be away from our children. Are you able to be in touch, first of all? I know that the orphanage has a staff, I think, of 40. There are uh, at least 60 children. And on a day-to-day -day basis, Haiti is difficult for any child, as we said, uh, the poorest country in the Western Hemisphere. I have been there. I have seen it. What do you know about them now? What is life like? Help people to understand why you decided that this was a calling for you, Mitch. Well, first of all, children don't ask to be born where they're born and certainly don't ask to be born into those circumstances. And then our children come from some of the most impoverished circumstances. Some were left to die under trees out in the woods. Some were dropped off at medical clinics. Nobody ever came back for them. Many of them we have to create names and birth certificates because we don't even know where they came from. Uh, many of them come to us sick or ill or malnourished. And these are children who deserve to be taken care of. Um, their life in Haiti is just unfair. I don't know another word for it. Our children haven't set foot outside of our orphanage gates in three years, uh, not even out into the street because it's too dangerous because of kidnappings or gang shootings or things like that. So we can't take them to the park. We can't take them for an ice cream. We can't take them to the beach. Uh, and every night when they say their, their nightly devotions and prayers, it's always to the backdrop of gunfire over this past week gunfire like I'd never heard before. I mean, the, you know, types of, 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 of shooting, you know, assault rifles and things like that. No child should have to live like that or wonder where the food's coming from or is it going to be water or are we going to have enough fuel to run the generators because we don't get electricity at all during the day. And if you don't have a generator, you don't even have lights, uh, let alone refrigerators to have food for 100 people. So every single part of life is a challenge because of the violence and the gangs that have that the gangs have brought to this country. And it's it's no way for anybody to live. And I'm talking on shows like yours because I'm imploring people to to help, to give and to get the, our government more deeply involved, in my opinion, than what it's been than just sending money and hoping that other forces will take care of matters. I, I don't think that that's going to work. You have said that the U.S. has an obligation to Haiti uh, after occupying the country, writing their constitution. But I, I know that you've also heard um, 
Haitian activists say, look, foreign actors should stay out of it. What do you think is the balance there? And, and I, you've started to make the argument, but what do you say to them? Well, it's not for me to say. I, 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 it's the, for the Haitians to say. But uh, they've taken a number of polls, and it's somewhere in around 80 percent of Haitians are asking for foreign involvement right now. So there may be some activists who don't want it, but if 80 percent of a country does, and everybody that I talk to, everybody that I deal with in Haiti says, please, can, can America come? Can somebody help us? Can somebody get rid of these gangs? Um, I, I take them at their word. It doesn't matter what I think. I, I'm not Haitian. But an awful lot of Haitians want that far. They don't want foreign interference forever. They want somebody to come in and take care of these gangs who simply are holding. I mean, they're only you know, a few thousand gang members who are holding a city of about five million people hostage because they have guns and the people don't. And, and they're just asking for help or somebody who's who is a bit of more uh, powerful force to come in and perhaps, you know, quell this and then and then, you know, leave when it's appropriate to leave and let the Haitians obviously govern themselves. Mitch Album, uh, best-selling author, 40, 40 million books sold, I think, but the work you do in Haiti uh, is some extraordinary stuff. I'm glad, you, again, that you and your wife are safe, and we thank you for coming on the program to, to bring your message. Thanks so much. You're welcome. You're welcome. And please don't forget the other Americans and Canadians who are still stranded there. Still there in Haiti. That is right.